Hello everyone, my name is Imran and in today's video we are going to learn about Gatsby. We are going to learn about what Gatsby is, uh, why should we use it, uh, what scenarios Gatsby will be the best choice. We are also going to learn about how to build the Gatsby website with WordPress in the back end and Gatsby on the front end. Uh, we'll go ahead and learn about uh, listing down all of the posts, creating single pages like these uh, over here, uh, displaying the images, etc. And we're also going to learn about how to deploy your website on Netlify. So you can see that my current website is deployed on Netlify and it's going to be totally free to deploy it and it will be really simple, really easy. Okay, so let's begin. So before we talk about Gatsby, so let's understand about headless CMS. So headless CMS means that you have your uh, backend separate from the frontend. For example, you can have your WordPress uh, for your backend wherein you can access all of the content with the help of WordPress REST API and you can have your frontend in any other uh, stacks like in JavaScript or even Laravel for that matter and access all of the content from the WordPress uh, with the help of the WordPress REST API or even GraphQL for that matter. So now there's been a rise of headless CMS. Uh, if we look at Google Trends uh, for the last 10 years, we can see that uh, in around 2015-ish, we can see there is an uh, increase in the popularity of headless CMS and you can see that it's, it's constantly increasing. So having said that, let's understand what Jamstack are. So you must have heard about this term or it, this could be a new term for you but Jamstack basically means JavaScript API markup. So what does that mean actually? Well Jamstack is actually a modern architecture and it helps you create fast secure sites and dynamic apps with JavaScript API and a pre-rendered markup which means that on the front end you will have your JavaScript and then you know all of the data can be accessed with the help of the APIs uh, from the backend and uh, you need to have pre-rendered markup so this these are one of the, the requirements of the Jamstack uh, architecture so if your uh, if your project meets this requirement that means it is a Jamstack it's following the Jamstack architecture and it's also uh, served without servers so Jamstack is not about any specific technologies, uh, it's just new way of building websites and apps that deliver better performance, high security, uh, lower cost of scaling and also a better developer experience. Now when we talk about JavaScript on the front end, it should be any dynamic programming during the request and response cycle is handled by JavaScript and it runs entirely on client side and any fronted framework, library, or even vanilla JavaScript. Now, when you talk about API, all of the server-side processes and database actions are abstracted into reusable APIs, which means you can have a backend and, and all of the content from the backend uh, can be accessed through uh, REST API or any other uh, reusable API. Uh, you can also create custom endpoints in case if you want to access any uh, data wherein uh, the endpoint is not available for example WordPress REST API is quite extensive however there will be times where you need to write your own custom endpoints and it is accessed over HTTPS with JavaScript and uh, like I said that these can be custom built or leveraged third-party services as well when we talk about markup it needs to be pre-rendered like how Gatsby does uh, so it should be templated markup should be pre-built at the deploy time and usually using a static site generator uh, for content sites and build tool for web apps. Now when is your site not a Jamstack? Well any project that relies on tight coupling between client and server for example WordPress uh, where there is a tight coupling between the client and server is an example of uh, a site which is not a Jamstack and a side bit with server side CMS like Drupal, Joomla or uh, Squarespace and a single page application that uses isomorphic rendering to build views on the server at runtime. For example, your Next.js. So Next.js wouldn't be a Jamstack because 
Next.js does not uh, generate pages statically at build time. It actually does it at runtime and renders content dynamically. So why Jamstack? As we discussed that it's because of performance, security. So you get better performance because it minimizes the first time to byte because we have already uh, built, generated our pages uh, at build time. So they're already ready to be served. And you know, with pre-built files served over CDN. And also high security, why? Because your content is already generated, your uh, API is already executed, your data is already available. So hacker probably cannot hack into your site. So with server-side process abstracted into microservices API, service, surface uh, areas for attacks are reduced. Uh, cheaper, easier scaling. Why? Because deployment amounts to a stack of files. They're just static files that can be served anywhere. And scaling is just a matter of serving those files in more places like CDN. So this comes to a question as to what is Gatsby? So a lot of people say that Gatsby is a stat static site generator. However, I would say that it is not just a static site generator. It is more than that. So Gatsby is an open source framework based on React. A lot of people call it a static site generator. What I would say that is not just a static site generator. There's more to it. Uh, you know, it's actually a progressive site generator. And there's a lot of other things that it does for us, which I'm going to be discussing uh, in this video. And you can build blazing fast website and apps because like we discussed, it's a Jamstack. Uh, Gatsby is a Jamstack, so the page is already uh, generated at the build time. So they're already available. They load almost instantly. So how does Gatsby actually work? Well, you have the data source that can be from either a CMS or just a bunch of markdown um, or from any APIs, third party APIs, your custom APIs or JSON, even CSV format. So they can come either from one or many resources. When that data is taken, then at the build time where your query is run. So all of the data can actually be sourced from all of these into a GraphQL. And then you can make that GraphQL query and that GraphQL query actually executes at the build time itself when the pages are generated. And then you con your data and content is already available. And uh, that data along with the HTML, CSS, uh, you know is the pages are generated at that time and whenever uh, it's deployed and the pages are accessed then your application is actually uh, rehydrated uh, with Gatsby into a react application and you can of course deploy it at many places like Netlify, uh, AWS Amplify, GitHub Pages, uh, Arabatic, Seat now it's, and many more. Now, there's one specific pattern that Gatsby uses, which is called PRPL pattern. I don't know if you've heard about it already. Well, it's basically a website structure which is developed by Google and for building fast performance websites. And P stands for push. So it's, it talks about that you need to push your critical resources on the initial route uh, using link preload and then render the initial route because the user doesn't necessarily need to see all of the content at once. So whatever content is going to see, just render that on the initial route and then just pre-cache all the remaining routes that probably he's going to visit next. And then finally, just lazy load and create the remaining routes on demand. So if I had to see this in action, like kind of visually, so how Gatsby implements is that it renders the HTML which is static HTML version of initial route and then uh, it goes ahead and loads the code bundle for those pages and then it pre-caches the next resources uh, which are linked from that initial route so if the user clicks on that uh, any of the link then it just generates the pages uh, on demand so it creates a new page on demand okay so that's how it implements the PRPL pattern all right, so also Gatsby core automatically turns React components to pages uh, from the pages directory with URLs. So uh, like your Next.js, it also has a pages directory and you don't necessarily need to handle routes on your own because you can just create a page, for example, about.js or contact.js 
and that page will actually be available uh, to you uh, sorry that route will be available and whatever content you put there will be served at, at that particular route okay so for example uh, your pages slash about dot js will be available at slash about uh, so i hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up and uh, do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already you can also follow me on twitter uh, my twitter handle is imran it's sayed and uh, on github as well so my github handle is I'm going to say it as well. And uh, I'm going to see you in the next video where we're going to talk about building websites with WordPress, building Gatsby website with WordPress. See you then. Bye bye.